the view of our planet, I think, is incredible. And the first time you actually see the Earth, uh, it's amazing. The planet is incredibly bright. It is much more bright than you would think it is, and it, it fills your whole vision. Uh, so you can see continents go by, and, uh, and, the, and they're, they're very, very bright. I would be incredibly thrilled to be part of anything that involves getting on a rocket and leaving the planet again. Imagine gazing down at Earth from the vastness of space and spotting a man-made structure so immense it rivals the visibility of natural landmarks. Evidence from much earlier megalithic construction is hiding in plain view. This feat of human engineering, akin to the iconic Great Wall of China, isn't just a testament to our ancestors' ingenuity. It's a modern marvel that can be seen from the space above. I think we're looking at hints and clues that something is missing in our story. What is this colossal structure? Stick around and find out while we explore first the mystery behind the massive wall in China. The Great Wall of China is a profound legacy left by various dynasties that shaped its path through history. The earliest records of what would become the iconic Great Wall trace back to the Eastern Zhou Dynasty, which documented attempts to fortify the northern borders against invaders. With the rise of the Qin Dynasty around 221 BC, significant strides were made in wall construction under the reign of Emperor Qin Shi Huang. He initiated the unification of various regional walls, which were initially built with tamped earth and local materials, creating a consolidated defense system against northern threats. This set the foundation for the extensive expansions that would follow. As the Baton passed to the Han Dynasty, they took the construction of the wall a step further into Mongolia. This was primarily to protect the Silk Road, which was vital for trade and strategic movements. During this era, materials like reeds and willow branches were incorporated into the layers of earth, showcasing an innovative utilization of available resources to strengthen the fortifications. I can't help thinking, time capsule, that there was an intention to preserve this. The adaptability and durability of these materials played a crucial role in the longevity of the wall. However, it was during the Ming Dynasty post-Mongol invasions that the Great Wall saw its most definitive reconstruction. The Ming era not only reinforced the wall using stones and bricks, but also introduced sophisticated architectural features such as battlements, watchtowers, garrison stations and troop barracks. This period is responsible for much of what is today recognized as the Great Wall, symbolizing the pinnacle of defensive architecture developed over centuries. The records of the Grand Historian by Sima Qian offers a rich historical account of these developments. His writings provide invaluable insights into the construction processes, the strategic imperatives and, notably, the harsh and often brutal conditions faced by the laborers involved. This documentation highlights the immense human effort and the significant costs endured during the wall's early phases, painting a vivid picture of ancient Chinese society and its unyielding drive to protect and prosper. Continuing from the historical accounts, the 20th century marked a significant era for the Great Wall of China as systematic archaeological studies began to unravel its mysteries further. Teams from China and around the world embarked on meticulous research, unearthing a variety of artifacts and materials. These findings have been pivotal in dating different segments of the wall and shedding light on the diverse construction methods employed over the centuries. The archaeological excavations revealed that the choice of construction materials varied significantly across different regions of the wall. For instance, in the rugged northern terrains, granite was predominantly used, reflecting its local abundance and durability, Conversely, in the flatter plains, builders commonly used rammed earth. This technique involved compacting layers of earth known locally as hangtu, which was both economical and readily available. The flexibility in material choice highlighted an adaptive construction strategy tailored to the varying geographic and resource conditions across the vast stretches of the wall. Moreover, the early segments of the Great Wall were not just simple earthworks. To enhance structural integrity and resist erosion, wooden frameworks were integrated within these earthen walls. However, in stone-rich areas, large stones were not only used as foundational bases, but also served as primary building blocks for much of the construction. 
wood played a crucial role too, especially in constructing gates, towers, and for reinforcing sections of the wall, although it was more vulnerable to decay and fire. As we delve further into the advancements in construction materials and techniques used for the Great Wall, the Ming Dynasty emerges as a period of significant evolution. During this era, the use of bricks and stone slabs became prevalent, enhancing the wall's durability and resistance to weather conditions. The uniform size and shape of the bricks simplified the construction process, as they were easier to handle and lay compared to the irregular stones used previously. This uniformity not only sped up construction, but also contributed to the overall structural integrity of the wall. Recognizing the massive requirement for these materials, builders strategically established kilns close to the construction sites. This was a practical solution to the logistical challenge of transporting heavy materials across vast distances. It's estimated that these kilns churned out hundreds of millions, possibly even billions of bricks throughout the dynasty, each one contributing to the grandeur of the wall. There are unexplained issues in our past, right. which are presently not explained by the system that teaches us about the past. One of the most fascinating advancements was the introduction of sticky rice mortar. This innovative material came about during the Ming Dynasty, when builders began mixing a paste made from sticky rice with lime. The result was a mortar that not only held bricks together more effectively, but also offered enhanced water resistance and strength. This organic-inorganic composite was revolutionary, making the wall far more durable than many might have anticipated. Recent studies have underscored the effectiveness of this mortar, revealing its unique ability to withstand significant pressure and resist aging which is why many sections of the wall still stand robustly today. Building the Great Wall of China was not just a monumental architectural achievement, but also a colossal human endeavor. The workforce required to construct such an extensive structure included millions of individuals over the centuries, soldiers, peasants, convicts, and even intellectuals who had fallen out of favor with those in power. These laborers were mobilized across various dynasties, each contributing to different sections and aspects of the wall's construction. The conditions these workers faced were incredibly harsh. Minimal supplies, brutal climates, and grueling physical labor were the norms. Many laborers did not survive the harsh winters, suffering from exhaustion and malnutrition. Historical records even suggest that some of the deceased were buried within the wall itself, which has led to the legend of the wall being referred to as the world's largest graveyard. Shifting our focus from the ancient architectural feats to a modern marvel of engineering, this structure known as the Bingham Canyon Mine, also known as the Kennecott Copper Mine, presents another extraordinary example of human ingenuity that can be seen from the heights of space. Located in the Okur Mountains southwest of Salt Lake City, Utah, this mine has been a beacon of industrial achievement since its inception in 1906. The origins of the mine trace back to 1898 when it was first developed by Enos Andrew Wall, who formed the Boston Consolidated Mining Company. The landscape of the mine changed dramatically in 1910 when it was acquired by the Kennecott Copper Corporation, marking the beginning of large-scale operations that have continued to this day. This makes it not only one of the oldest, but also one of the most productive mines in the United States. Bingham Canyon is primarily an open pit mine, a type of mining operation that involves digging out large open pits to access ore deposits below the surface. This method has seen several technological advancements at the mine, notably the first use of large-scale electric shovels in 1926 and the introduction of haul trucks in 1937 which revolutionized the way materials were moved within the mine. Over the years, the mine has produced more copper than any other mine in the world, totaling over 20 million tons. But copper isn't the only resource extracted here. Significant amounts of gold, silver, and molybdenum have also been produced, contributing to its status as a cornerstone of global mining. The impact of the mine extends beyond just production. The excavation has provided geologists with a detailed cross-section of the Earth's crust, offering invaluable insights into geological strata and ore deposit formations. This has been a boon for the field of economic geology, enhancing our understanding of the natural processes that shape our planet. Another intriguing aspect of the mine is its influence on aircraft navigation. The sheer size of the excavation has disturbed the local gravitational field to the extent that compass readings can become erratic for pilots flying overhead. This massive pit has literally reshaped the landscape and the magnetic field surrounding it. 
Speaking of size, the Bingham Canyon mine is enormous. At its widest point, it spans about two and a half miles and reaches depths of more than three quarters of a mile. To put that into perspective, the pit is so large that two of the world's tallest buildings, the Burj Khalifa, could lay end to end at its base and still be dwarfed by the scale of the excavation.